All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for hopping in. Um, my name is Brian Tuminyema. I'm a Nigerian medical student in my third year um, studying medical radiography at Federal University of Technology School of Basic Medicine here in Imo State, one of the states in Nigeria. And um, apart from my medical studies, I'm also a freelance medical content writer. I do a lot of writings and medical articles. I do a lot of writings and blog content. I work with personal clients out there. I work with healthcare and pharmaceutical companies out there. So today I have an amazing guest speaker. Hey, Gabriel, could you introduce yourself to the audience? Yeah, hi, I'm Gabrielle. Um, I'm a second year dental school student at LECOM. Um, I'm originally from Bradenton, Florida, and LECOM happens to be in Bradenton, Florida, so it's my hometown area. Um, I went to undergrad at the University of South Florida, and I majored in business. Hmm. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So we have six questions to ask you for you to share your narratives on these questions for the audience to get enlightened. Are you ready? Yeah. So if I'm looking downwards, I'm reading the questions to Gabriel. So if I would wonder what's Ryan's I'm looking downwards for. <laughs> so yeah. So the first question goes this way. What inspired you to pursue a career in dentistry? And how did your journey lead you to Lincoln's Dentist School of Dentistry? So tell us what does that mean? How, how does that work for you? So my dad is an oral surgeon and so is my brother. They work together. Um, so I've been in the field of dentistry for a very long time. Um, I started working there when I was like 15 or 16. And it originally wasn't what I wanted to do. I actually wanted to pursue medicine first. And then I kind of switched over after talking a lot to my brother and my dad and just kind of realizing the work-life balance and like, the work-life lifestyle, you get a lot of more time um, to yourself. I don't have to be on call. I have probably a higher opportunity of, of opening my own practice one day. So for that, um, that was a huge player and why I wanted to do dentistry. And I also, I also think just like being in it with my dad and, and my brother, I think it's kind of in my roots. So it's really what got me into it. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So I heard you you mentioned something about measuring and business. So how does how do you balance those equations like doing dentistry and also business? Yeah, so I do want to open my own practice one day and a lot of that is the business side. So for me, um in undergrad, I have long story short, I played golf for a year at UW Madison. I got injured and I transferred home to USF and during that time period, my GPA was super low. It was a 2.7 after my freshman year of college. And so in order for me to get that back up, I thought it would be smart if I majored in business because that way I wouldn't have to take the um, filler classes of a biology degree that were significantly harder than the filler classes of a business degree. So I used that as like a tactic to increase my GPA so I could still get into dental school. But at the end of the day, it actually did benefit me a lot because I learned a lot about um, the economy and different ways to run a business. And at the end of the day, for me, dentistry is going to be a business if I plan to open my own practice. That is amazing. You know, that Thing you just shared right now, your narrative you just shared that right now made me to um, recall about a recent publication by MedPage today. Do you know that publication? No. MedPage. Okay, MedPage is um, a medical company that publishes medical articles. You know? So I, I read the articles, the topic was like anatomy, physiology, medical biochemistry, and finances. Mm -hmm. These are courses that medical students want also because they are also looking to, you know, venture into some businesses and stuff. Yeah. So this, you know, your journey, you know, got me, you know, enlightened because it, you know, brought me backwards to that publication I read. So definitely 
medical students out there, medical professionals out there needs to do courses that are related to finances and businesses because most of them are business-minded people, apart from mm -hmm. being a medical doctor or being a dentist or being an ophthalmologist or whatever medical career you're pursuing. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for sharing that with us. Yeah, of course. So are you ready for the second question? Yeah. Did I get, I knew there was a second part to that question. Did I answer it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What okay. led you to, yeah, absolutely okay, you did. Okay, just making sure. Wait, hold on, tell us more about your school. About LECOM? Yeah. Okay, so LECOM is a, a dental institution. We actually have a, LECOM stands for Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine. So we have a school of medicine, we have a school of dentistry, we have a pharmacy school, or not a pharmacy school, excuse me, we have a master's school, and then we actually did add a pharmacy school, and then we also have now a podiatry school. So there's a lot going on with LECOM, um, but specifically the school of dentistry, um, we have about 105 students, we're expanding now to, I think, 125 or 150. Um, it's in kind of a small town, but only like 30 minutes from Tampa, 30 minutes from Sarasota. Um, it's interesting about LECOM because we do a problem-based learning curriculum. So it actually allows us to have a lot more free time to study. Um, so basically what that is, instead of having like a specific class for physio, biochem, um, dental management, uh, pathology, all these different classes, we have them all in one. So we'll actually get like 20 different chapters. We have to self learn them. And then we'll take like 150 question exam on a Saturday. So that kind of sucks. But the overall um, ability to have that free time to study and the leisure of like, okay, I have a two hour class on Monday, Wednesday and Friday, but I don't have to take five different courses for, for those different um, credit hours. It's really nice that it's all in one, so. Wow. Oh, wow. and we, we also get into clinic um, super early. That's one of the reasons a lot of people are interested in LECOM. We yeah. are in clinic by our, mm. this the end of our D1 year, we're already doing like hygiene appointments and stuff. So it's a lot of hands-on think... exposure. That's amazing. I think your your school is more practical than the theory aspects, right? <clears throat> yeah. That's amazing. You know, that's really amazing because, you know, the kind of course you're doing is, you know, more of clinical, you know, based, <laughs> you know, you know, hands-on practice, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's amazing that your school is really paving that path. Yeah. So thank you so much for telling us more about your school and how they're growing. For sure. <laughs> do they do medicine over there? Do they? Yes, they do. It's it's a what is it? Do program. Oh, okay. The doctor expert. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So you ready for the second question? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because I I know you're dental students, you know. So I, I would love if you could share some valuable dental tips for maintaining optimal oral health, mm -hmm. especially for those considering a career in dentistry. So tell us, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, so I think the biggest thing, um, even with everything in life, is just consistency. I think if you can, you know, be consistent with your oral hygiene routine, like brush twice a day, floss once a day, water pick um, once or twice a day, mouth rinses, I think that's great. But really the biggest thing is is keeping up with it. Um, a lot of people vary in their, which carries is equivalent to a cavity. It's just like the scientific term that we use in school. So if I say carries, I mean cavity, but everybody has a different carries risk. So I low, someone else might be high and it can all depend on, on your specific microbiome in your mouth. So some people are more prone to getting caries, some are not. I can eat sugar and carbs all day and I don't really get cavities, which is really nice, but some people will. 
Um, so if you limit your carb intake, you limit your snacking, you limit your amount of sugar, um, that will help a lot too. And they do talk about in school, a big thing is trying to section out your meal. So if you're going to eat lunch at 12 o'clock, try to section out your meal from 12 to one and then drink some water so the pH in your mouth comes back to normal instead of like snacking all day long. That really helps too. Okay, that was an amazing valuable dental tips. So do, do, do you suggest that eating before brushing is really advisable? What do you mean? Like, you're not gonna brush without eating. You're gonna, after eating, you just stay some time to brush. Do you, is it advisable to tell for the audience? I think that, I know they say, I haven't learned much about that specifically. Um, okay. I know you are supposed to wait 30 minutes after you eat to brush. Um, but I, I mean, for me, I brush my teeth right when I wake up and then I brush my teeth again when I go to bed and that's really it. If I have something like stuck in my mouth then I'll go floss it out or I'll do like a mouth rinse, rinse or something. But I mean, if you're the type of, like I don't eat breakfast right away in the morning. So if you're a person who eats breakfast right away and you want to eat breakfast and then brush your teeth, there's nothing wrong with that. Amazing. Um, there was um, a, a, a dental medical student here in Nigeria that um, wrote a publication that uh, she tagged me on, mm -hmm. you know, because um, I'm, you know, apart from medical studies, I'm also a very good research. I do a lot of researches and I read a lot you know, to improve myself in the kind mm -hmm. of work I do and also in my studies. So she was writing about the mismanagement of using our toothbrush, uh -huh. the toothbrush. So what are your thoughts on that? How to use it, you know, the longest time, to, like the times to use it and not to use it to change it and stuff like that. So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so um, typically you're supposed to brush your teeth for about two minutes. You're not supposed to put a lot of pressure. You're supposed to have that like sweet spot. You don't want to go super light, but you don't want to go really hard because you can cause damage. Um, switching your toothbrush at least every six months, try to go for every three months with the tooth, the bristles on the head, they'll get damaged and like spread apart and then they're not doing what they're supposed to do. Um, and specifically, a lot of people don't know this, but you are supposed to brush your gums. So you're supposed to brush this way on your incisal edges and then on the back part of your teeth too. So I think a lot of people only kind of brush on the top surfaces, but you have to get everywhere. And a lot, they say brushing at a 45 degree angle is very helpful, mm -hmm. but no one's going to measure their angle when they're brushing their teeth. Wow. So. That, was, that, was, that, was, that was amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we have the third question. So how do you balance the demands of, you know, dental school with maintaining a healthy lifestyle? And do you have any tips, right, for aspiring medical students that are looking forward to doing dentistry mm -hmm. or, you know, managing, like on managing stress and staying motivated? Mm -hmm. So tell us how, what are your, your takes on that? Yeah, so I'm one of those people. I'm not. I'm not really a stressful person. During finals week is probably the most stressed I get. But what I like to do to maintain a balance is I I have like a, a blackboard in my room and I'll write out everything I have to do Monday through Friday and I have to incorporate a workout. So I like work out five times a week. So I'll incorporate it into my schedule and then. What I like to do is get my bulk of the bulk of the work I have to do for the week done on Monday through Thursday so I can enjoy my Friday and Saturday. And then anything that I have that I didn't get done, I'll make it up on Sunday. And obviously, if I have tests coming up, I'll spend Saturday and Sunday studying. But I like to just follow my schedule and make sure I'm getting what I need to done during the week so I can enjoy my weekend. Awesome. That is, that is amazing. So what are your tips for aspiring dentist students on managing stress and stay motivated? Yeah, I think, again, like stress management, just 
cramming is is going to be the death of you. Like it, it's just not something that is relaxing to your body. So I really like to keep up with my work every day. Like I'm not going to leave all my studying for the week or two weeks before the exam. Like I want to start looking at it right when I get it. So I'm not going to have to stress myself out because I think a lot of that is just time management. Um, waking up early really helps. Like I, every morning I typically get up at like 630 and I'll either work out in the morning or I'll study in the morning. But when you get an early start to your day, it adds a lot of hours that you have to get what you need to done. Um, but I think the biggest thing is just know you're going to get through it. Like you've gotten this far and I'm sure nothing terrible has happened to you. I'm sure, you know, we all fail. We all fail an exam. We all fail in life sometimes, but you're going to get through it. And you just have to realize that in the back of your head. Like it's just another stepping stone that you got to step over and it'll, it'll be okay. Definitely, definitely to be okay. You just have to keep pushing. Nevertheless, sure. what happens, <laughs> you know, because you know, sometimes because you met you in dental school, sometimes you feel, you know, burned out. Sometimes mm -hmm. you feel, hey, I'm am I good enough to do this? But mm -hmm. you know, the passion you had before right. entering dental school, what pushes you? So right. make sure you're very passionate about what you're doing. You're mm -hmm. looking forward to joining med medicine, med school mm -hmm. or dental school, whatever medical aspect you're going for yeah. make sure you're really passionate about it yeah and i think following up on that when you love something like a lot of times what i'll do when i get super burnt out and i'm like i have no motivation to study anymore i'll go back and i'll i'll work with my dad again or, or even if you have a local dentist or medical doctor you're shadowing in the area go back and shadow them and, and remember why you're doing it you know because sometimes when you're in school it's just books and sim lab and you're not really remembering why what your why was and i think going back and and shadowing and, and watching what was the reason that made you want to do it in the first place really helps that is amazing that was an amazing nugget you dropped right there thank you so much for, sh for sharing that for us yeah so we have three more questions to go you ready for the fourth question so could you highlight some common misconceptions about dental care, right? That you often encounter in your practice or on your blog? Because I see also you're also a blogger, right? So tell mm -hmm. us more about that. Um, yeah, I, I'm my I'm a blogger on Instagram. I have a page called Teeth by Tomio. Um I just post like dentistry content day in the life content um funny stuff dental tips all those things uh but i think the biggest misconception that i have and a lot of other dentists and dental students have is a lot of times people will pull the oh you're not a real doctor and that is such a big misconception because we actually do have to learn about the whole body all of the systems the only part that I would say is different from us to a med student is probably the waist down. We don't learn much of the waist down. We don't really learn about the legs. We don't really learn about the feet. But then that, we do learn about the whole body system. Um, and it was interesting because the other day I was in church with my dad and there was a medical emergency. And, you know, we are dentists, but we do know exactly what to do in an emergency, just like medical doctors. So... I think not too many people, but you always have those few people that are like, oh, you're not a real doctor. So <laughs> that's the only really misconception I've encountered on my page so far. Mm. Wow. So you guys don't do lower limbs, right? Not really. We learned a little bit about them, but we kind of stop at the waist. Oh, kind of like the upper limbs. You guys do more. Yeah. Of that, right? So like, GI up or we do reproductive too. We learn about reproduction, but the reproductive tracts and everything, but we don't really know much about the legs down. <laughs> okay. Do you guys know more about the head and neck, the neuroanatomy, yeah. especially that? Yeah, for sure. So 
obviously most of our education is focused on the head and neck. The first year of dental school, it really was like everything like between like, obviously you take your general anatomy class. That's like the whole body. Um, and then the last section of our anatomy class was focused on the head and neck. And now our second year, we're really getting into different bone diseases, pathology, um, dental related diseases now specifically. So first year was basically everything. And now we're really focusing in on the head and neck. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. So wait, hold on. You know, I'm a medical radiograph student and also a medical writer. These works are really draining, right? And, you know, being a medical student or being a dental student is a full-time job. And For having sure. a third penalty is, 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 is kind of like detrimental. But you're also a blogger. So before I go forward to these questions I have for you, the remaining two, so in a nutshell, how do you balance being a blogger and also your dance school? For me, it's I really do it because it's it's really fun for me. It to be honest with you, it makes school a lot more fun for me and more enjoyable. Like obviously I love what I'm doing, but it is school. Like you said, it's a full time job. Um what I try to do, it's as you know, I'm sure it gets very addicting. So I try to portion out a section of my day. So like when I'm eating breakfast, I'll instead of watching TV, I'll like make a reel or I'll browse Instagram or something. Um, same thing with like lunch or anything like that. Or I, when I'm at the gym, if I'm doing the Stairmaster or something, I'll try to get my post created instead of like listening to music and doing something aimless because it does take up a lot of time. I don't think people realize how much work being a blogger slash influencer is. Um, so that's kind of how I maintain it. I try to, when I'm practicing in Sim Lab already, I'll try to just like take little clips and record. Um, so yeah, I just try to incorporate it when I'm doing something that I usually would just be watching TV or not studying. Hey, hey, yeah, absolutely. I, I do agree. I do yeah. agree. So, thank you so much for sharing that one first. So that brings me to the fifth question, right? As a blogger, right, what topics do you find most resonating with your audience mm -hmm. when it comes to dental health and lifestyle? It's interesting because everything I think, like when I post, I'm like, oh, this is people are going to love this. And it's so weird. It's like, those are the ones that do the worst. I think I like to post uh, like dental tips on there. Like I posted um, the other day for Valentine's Day that you can actually transmit bacteria and cavities through kissing. And I was like, oh, people will love knowing this fun fact. But it's interesting because I have a dental related page, but people actually like to see more of like, day in the lives or like, um, like little things. Like I posted it like an outfit of the week and it was literally like me and scrubs for five days straight and people loved it. So I think it's a lot of like our attention span nowadays is so short. So I think as long as the video was short and engaging and like authentic, people really like it. Um, I do have a lot of pre dents on my page. So when I post like, um tips about that i think that does really well um and i honestly think like a lot of the jokes do well too like i'll i'll post little memes and people like it so it just make people a little you know <laughs> you know <laughs> make them a little you know like oh i say make them laugh or something yeah you know yeah yeah. You know, pushing about dental tips every time it gets bored or something right so for sure have to diverge yeah Mm -hmm. So I try to do everything like I'll do a dental tip and then I'll the next one I'll do will be in like a month and a half. So I try to just like give people everything. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So we have the last question. How do you feel about the last question, Gabriel? I the last question that you sent me. Yeah. yeah. How do you feel about it? Um, 
I, there's just so many new innovations, you know? Mm. So I, I don't think robots will ever take over dentistry, but I think that like, there's going to be so many technical advancements in dentistry that I think it's really going to expand the realm. Um, who even knows what they can do? You know, like now we can do same day seated crowns because we'll have the, the mill and we can do it right there. Like maybe that one day will be faster. We now have digital scanning. Um, I think something that would be groundbreaking would be um, scanning through tissue. We can do soft tissue scanning now, but if we could be able to like penetrate that laser through the tissue, that would be very, very helpful with dentistry. So I hope to see that one day. Um, yeah, but yeah, just yeah. a lot of different technological advancements. Like scanning has really changed a lot of our lives in dentistry. So I can't wait to see what else they do with the technology nowadays. You know, what do you have to say about um, dental radiography? Um, a lot of people have a huge misconception of that. Um, it's funny because a series of dental radiographs is actually equivalent to the radiation you get every day, like walking outside. So I think a lot of people don't know that. And a lot of people think it's really bad for you. But it's actually worse for the dental practitioner or the dental assistant, whoever's taking the x-ray, because we are doing it multiple times a day, every day. But the patient themselves, it's really like, it's nothing. So I don't think, I think it's a great resource. Like we have to use them because we can't see yeah. what's under the surface. But I think it scares a lot of people and it shouldn't. <laughs> Absolutely. So what advice would you give to pre-dental students out there that are gonna watch this video who are navigating the application processes and preparing for dental school. So wrap up the session by mm -hmm. sharing your advice for them. Yeah, um, I think there is no harm with asking people for help. When I was in your position, I just, I didn't really think about, oh, there's people who are dental students who have blogs like you and me, like, and I'm always happy to answer questions and you know help guide you guys um i actually just started a pre-dental advising um business that's in my bio so i'm more than happy to do one-on-one -on -one advising with you guys um but i think the biggest tip is like get advice from the people who have already done it you don't want to rebuild the wheel like if someone already did it and they can help you take their help take their advice um you know, just every day, set a goal for every day. Okay, today I'm, I'm going to get my, the first paragraph of my personal statement done. And just keep setting those goals and just remember your why and just keep pushing and, and find a good resource for the DAT. Um, do well on that and just try to increase your shadowing hours. They love to see shadowing. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can only do what you can do. So just know that you're doing as much as you can and and you'll get there if you really want to do it absolutely thank you so much you guys heard it that she's willing to help so do well to reach out to gabriel you know mm -hmm. book a one-on-one -on -one session with her if you need some guidance on your application processes For sure. and also i know the most painful aspect of this application is the personal statement. So yes. make sure you reach out to Gabriel for more insights on how to write your personal statement to stand out before other applications out there. So if we've come to the end of the session, Gabriel, you've been an amazing guest speaker. Thank you so much for sharing your narratives and these questions for the audiences to get more enlightened on things related to oral health in general and how to navigate dental school and the application processes. Thank you so much. So if you love this content, do well to like, comment, and mm -hmm. share to your network. It hopefully, works. yeah, hopefully to touch someone. Yes, thank you so much for having me on. This was great. You're welcome. Thank you.